Welcome to the UChem tutorial on calculating heats of reactions from bond energies. So here's a reaction. I have hydrochloric acid reacting with acetate ion to produce acetic acid and a chloride ion. I'm going to have this all happen in aqueous solution and I want to know what the heat of that reaction is. And so from just from looking at that, one thing I could do is I could calculate this using the standard heats of formation. So I would find the tables for standard enthalpies of formation, and I would find the heat of formation for the products and the heat of formation for the reactants. And then I would go ahead and apply this equation which relies on Hess's law. And Hess's law says that enthalpy is a state function and so we can break things down into steps and then sum the steps as long as the steps sum to the overall reaction were all okay. Um, and that's a fine way to do that except it requires quite a lot of reference information for all the compounds that we have there. Another method that we can use for covalent compounds is to calculate this heat using bond energies. And the calculations from the bond energy method and the heat of formation method should be roughly equivalent. They do use different experimental data to find those energies, so they will become, be slightly different, but we should come up with roughly the same value but with both of these methods. In general, when bonds are broken, all right, it takes energy to break bonds. All right, so we have positive values for breaking bonds, for enthalpy values. Um, and then the bonds formed, it, we release energy when bonds are formed. And so those are usually negative values. And the sign in the equation takes care of that. So I'm going to use this equation for my reaction above. So I've drawn the structures of the reactants and the structures of the products. If you're not good at drawing Lewis structures, uh, you should really work on that before you start looking at bond energy problems. Uh, what I need to do is look at the bonds that are broken and the bonds that are formed. So let's take a look at that. I've highlighted in orange the bonds that are broken on the left. So I'm breaking that hydrogen chlorine bond on the left in hydrochloric acid. And I am um, making a bond between the oxygen and hydrogen over there in the acetic acid. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my 427 kilojoules per mole for the breaking of that hydrogen chlorine bond. And I'm going to subtract the 467 kilojoules per mole for the oxygen-hydrogen bond that was formed, and I'm going to get a total of negative 40 kilojoules per mole. Again, those values that I got, kilojoules per mole, those are from a bond energy table, and you'll find that reference material in any chemistry textbook. This reaction is exothermic because I see a negative heat of reaction. The process, all right, that I'm going to use for all of these examples is first I need a balanced reaction, then I need to draw structures, I need to identify the broken and created bonds, and then I'm going to look up the bond energies in a table, and I'm going to apply my equation. The heat of that reaction is equal to the sum of the bonds, enthalpy for the bonds broken, and the sum of the bonds Form. So let's take a look at C2H3Cl, um, and we're going to look at that with um, bromine gas, so that's going to react with bromine gas, and then I'm going to get C2H3Br2Cl, and that's a gas as well. So let's take a look at the heat of this reaction. And I've drawn the Lewis structures of the reactants, and the Lewis structures for the products, or the product. And what I've done is highlighted the bonds that are broken on the left and the bonds that are made on the right. And so now what we'll do is we will look at the heats for each of those broken or formed bonds. On the right hand side um, I have two carbon bromine bonds that are formed so I multiply that enthalpy by two. That's why I need to have that sum of the number of bonds formed. Make sure to count every one. It's not each type but how exactly how many bonds that are formed. And then what I'll do is I'll just add everything together for the bonds broken and then the bonds formed and perform the arithmetic and I end up with negative 92 kilojoules per mole, another exothermic reaction. All right, let's take a look at a third example. And this is a little bigger, so I need a little more space. What is the heat of reaction for the combustion of benzene? So benzene is C6H6 and I'm gonna react that with oxygen and I've drawn the structures there for the reactants, and then I have the products, 
okay? I'm drawing a little bit fast. It might take you a little while to get those structures drawn. That's okay. Um, just in the interest of time, this is a little bit shorter. So if you take a look at those structures there, we also have the coefficients for the stoichiometry in the reaction, and so you need to pay attention to that as well. So let me look at each type of bond here. In orange, I have the double bonds in benzene, and I have three of those. So I'm going to take three times the bond energy for a carbon-carbon double bond, which is 614 kilojoules per mole. Again, I don't remember these. Um, these are something I looked up in a table. The blue bonds are carbon-carbon single bonds. Those are going to be uh, 347 kilojoules per mole. It's important to notice that it takes more energy to break a double bond than it does to break a single bond. It's also really important that you don't nest the bonds. If a double bond is broken, you find the bond energy for a double bond. You don't, do not take the bond energy for a double bond and a bond energy for a single bond. So in this structure, I have three double bonds. Those are highlighted in orange and all of those are broken. I have three single bonds that are there. Those are highlighted in blue and those are broken. So that's where I got those sets of three there. Now I have six of those carbon hydrogen bonds in green and those are 413 kilojoules per mole. My next is the oxygen. The oxygen is 498 kilojoules per mole and there's nine halves of those as my stoichiometric coefficient. On the other side of the reaction I have 12 carbon uh, oxygen double bonds. Um, that's because I have six CO2s and each CO2 has two of those double bonds in it. Um, if you look on your bond energy table, you'll find that there's a special special energy, 799 kilojoules per mole, for the carbon-oxygen um, double bond in carbon dioxide, so be careful about that one. This is a common question to do combustions, so that's a common um, enthalpy that you'll use. There on the water, we have six total um, hydrogen-oxygen bonds that are formed, and those are 467 kilojoules per mole. Now I just got to add all this up. So I have the reactants at 76 O2 kilojoules per mole. And then on the other side, I have 12,390 kilojoules per mole for the products. So my overall heat of reaction is the 76O2, that is the bonds that are broken, minus the bonds that are formed on the product side, and I end up with negative 4,688 4, kilojoules per mole. And that's a very big and very exothermic reaction, and that's expected because combustions of hydrocarbons are usually rather exothermic, so I, this makes sense that I have a large number.